Number two, as we stand for the reading of God's Word. We'll be reading from the book of John. Amen. Today, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Amen. And take our thought, amen, that God has laid on our heart today. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Woo! Glory to God. I feel good, don't you? Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. He is so good. Amen. And has blessed us to be in this house one more time that we might live and glorify Him and just worship in His precious name. The Bible says in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, many, many, probably everyone knows this story. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Nephi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee and to Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Say amen as you be seated. I want to tell our message today. Second chances. Say amen. Everybody in the house ought to be able to say amen to that. Amen. Everybody in the house, amen, ought to rejoice. Amen. At that title. Amen. Second chances. Amen. And that is not near as many, amen, as we have had in our lives as Christians, or even sinners to the opportunities, amen, that God has given us, amen. And I'm glad today, amen, and I imagine you are too, that everybody in the house, amen, is so thankful, amen, that He is a God, amen, of second chances, amen. I could have titled the message, not only second chances, amen, but third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, amen, right on down to Amen. The number probably could be countless. Amen. The chances that God has given us. Amen. As men and women of God. Amen. To set our lives on the right course. Amen. And I'm going to tell you. Amen. That hell will be filled with people. Amen. That didn't just only pass up one change. Amen. But they passed up a second change. Amen. A third change. A fourth change. A fifth change. And on and on and on. Only God knows, amen, how many changes that we've actually had in this life. You might be thinking, why would God do such a thing as that? Why would God put up with us as much as He does? Amen. And the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, amen, in verse 9, and this is the reason, amen, it says that the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some men cast slackness, but what's this buddy is long suffering. Long suffering means, amen, that he puts up with us. Amen, he puts up with our silliness sometimes. Amen, he puts up with us. Amen, when a lot of times he really don't have to. But because he is long suffering to us, word, amen, the Bible says, not willing, and this is the key, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come, amen, and to repentance. And that is why, amen, that God puts up with me. I'll use me for example. That's all right. Amen. He has put up with me, amen, for better than 40 years. Amen. Every time that I've stumbled, every time that I have failed him, every time that I might have seemed like, amen, I was drifting off in the wrong direction, amen, he was right there, amen, and he sent me a word, amen, that always put me back on this straight and narrow, amen, I'm so thankful, amen, that he is a God of long suffering, and he is a God of second chances. And for me, third chances, and fourth chances, and fifth chances, amen, so many that I can't even count. But he is long suffering. And you know what it is? He don't want 
any of us die and go to hell. I'm telling you, in spite of ourselves, Jesus loves us. In spite, He didn't call, call you, amen, because of your talents, amen, or your money, amen, and certainly not your good looks, amen. He called you because He loves you. He genuinely loves you, gave His life for you, shed His blood for you, not willing, Peter said, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And look at our hell. We'll be filled with people. Amen. That had change after change after change. That's why the Bible goes on to tell us that those that go to hell, that they will absolutely be without excuse. Why does that preacher? Because he gave them change after change. If you are in the house of the Lord today, that's one more chance. Whether you are prayed up enough, ready to be raptured, whatever the situation, whether you may be a backslider or just a sinner, today, right now on this Sunday, God is extending to you another change. That's how much. No one knowing that you may well get up and walk out that door, even never look back at the owner, that God is so long-suffering, and He is so merciful, and He loves you so much that He is today giving you one more chance. Huh? You know, it's a good thing I hear God. Don't you walk out on me, I'll strike you dead if I can. I told what I did. Man, I'd throw me out of life and go, oh, glory to God. And you wouldn't even make it to your car. And I would shout you out of the boat. Ain't you glad I ain't God? Huh? You know why? You know what the difference is between me and God? He let you get up and walk right out. Go to your home. Amen. Just relax. Do whatever you're doing. And most likely, and I hope that it will extend to you another change next Sunday. That's what plan a God is. He's a God of second chance. I was thinking when I was preparing this message of God lay on my heart, that old Simon Peter. And the Bible says, and we know that Peter, for three and a half years, when God called him, he walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. Amen. He heard him with his own ears teach. Amen. The gospel of the kingdom. He saw him literally raise the dead, open up blinded eyes, heal lepers. And the Bible says the world could not contain the books if everything was written down that Jesus had been. So there were things that Peter saw Jesus do as God that's not even written in the Bible. And the Bible says, at the end of that three and a half years, Jesus now was fulfilling his ministry. He was coming down to the end of his predestinated journey in this natural life. And the Bible says, he gathered his disciples together, those that followed him, those that he washed their feet, those that he put bread, a few fishes, and they saw the miracle of the thousands. They were there. And the Bible says, Jesus looked at them, and he said, because of this night, all men shall be offended. And man, when Peter heard that, he jumped up and said, No, Lord, no, Lord, not Catholic, not me, Lord, not me. The rest of them may run, the rest of them may flee, but I'm going to stick by you. I'm going to be there with you. And the Bible says that Jesus said, Oh, me, would be offended. And Peter said, he has this. He 
said, not only will I not be offended, he said, he said I'll never be offended. And the Bible says, he went on to say, I will die with you. Man, he saw the miracles. He saw the power of the resurrection. And in his heart, he looked Jesus right in the face and said, Oh, God, Jesus gathered his twelve together and said, Let us go now to the garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible says that when they got in the garden, amen, some of them, he set off to this side. And Peter and John and then James, he said, You fellas come to the Father. I'm going to go away and I'm going to pray. And the Bible says he went yonder to pray. You know the story. He said, Watch with me. You know that fellow that said, I'll never be offended. I think that he's going to walk. That's why. You know, he, he said, Watch with me. Man, there's a mob. There's a multitude right beyond the horizon. They are out to seek my life. And it's just not time yet. Will you watch with me? Man, he left it all bright eyed. He went out to pray. And then when he came back, he went to sleep. He woke him up. He said, What? Can you not watch me with me one hour? And you know the story. Three times he came to them. And they were asleep. And finally, finally he said to them, sleep on. And right before daybreak, when the sun was to come from beyond the sunrise, amen, all in the distance, they heard voices. Amen. And they, they began to seek torches and the lights. And here come this multitude. This mob led by Judas is carried. And the Bible says, Amen, when they come there, Amen, Judas, Amen, identify him, kiss him. And in their conversation, this man, Peter, that said, I'll die with you. I'll never be offended with you. Jesus looked at him said, I'm going to tell you something, Peter. Before the cock crows. You will deny me three times. Can you imagine what Peter said? He just had testified, Lord, I'm going to go all the way with you. I'm here to stay. You brought me to it. You're going to bring me through it. Can you imagine what he felt like when Jesus looked at him and said before the cock, Amen, Jesus, he will deny me three times. Amen. And then the mob, they led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, and the elders to the priest's palace. And they had Jesus, and they led him in the fortress. And old Peter, one thing he did, Bible says, all of his disciples fled. Every one of them, all of those that saw the miracles, fled, the Bible says. And the Bible says, oh, Peter, he did do this. He followed and fought off. I mean, the mob had Jesus down here at this wall, leading to the palace of the high priest. Here was old Peter. I mean, look at him. I think he was more being nosy than anything. And the Bible says he followed them inside the high priest's house. And the Bible says he was there to see what the end would be. In other words, if Jesus was going to survive the night, if Jesus was all that he said, there he was. And the Bible says he was inside. And he just joined right in with the crowd, and he was warming himself by the fire. And all of a sudden, this damsel 
for your foolishness. Man, you're going to swear on somebody's life to swear on you. In case you get it wrong, you'll be the one to die. Now, that's what I swear on my preacher's life. Oh, glory to God. Man, don't do, don't do nothing like that. Oh, I'm going to do it. I feel the Holy Ghost, man. You know why? Because I've had a second chance. I've had a third chance. I've had a fourth and fifth chance. And after fire came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. I'm going to tell you something. You know what a shame is? For good, I have to man or woman to be out in public trying to have a walk you on. And they people that are doing, you know why? Because actually in their heart, they are offended because of Jesus. I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're ashamed of the way you dress out there, you shouldn't dress right in here. Come on now, give me my hand and clap the clothes. I said if you're ashamed, amen, of the dress standard, amen, for the church of Jesus Christ out there, then why wear it in here? Come on now. And they'll, they'll, they'll kind of change. They got their appearance when going out that they won't look so odd and so peculiar. And I'm going to take some. People are going to know who you are by your very appearance. And if man cannot look at you and know that you are a child of God, it's probably because you're not. Come on now. They say, hey, buddy, your speech betrays you. Then began he to curse. Now he's really mad. Then this man, Peter, that saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, this man, Jesus, 
who Jesus healed his mother-in-law of a fever, this man Jesus, amen, that he saw, amen, healed two lepers at the snap of the finger. This man Peter, that was God close by, and the woman who had an issue of blood, rushed out and touched the hem of his garment. He saw the miracle that had taken place, and immediately the flow of blood had dropped out within this woman. Then he began to curse. This man was saying, I will never, I will never be offended because of you. This man was saying, I'll die with you. He was out on the porch. Well, Jesus went a room or two away. Amen. Denying him, saying that he didn't have anything to do with him, and he wasn't a part of his church. And then he began, he the curse. He had a cow kick for Peter to hear. Then Peter then began to eat the curse and to swear. Make it sound on oath. I swear before you and all that's on this porch. I don't know him. Quite the lie, Peter was. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the talk crew. Then Peter was yours. No way. Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus. Which said unto him, Before the top crowed, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. You think about it. He went out. He realized what he had done. Now, it was not preordained or predestined that Peter was to deny him three times. But Jesus, knowing the hearts of all men, knew that when it came down to where the rubber as though sent his meets the road, Peter wouldn't be there like he said he would. He knew that. And as Peter was a boaster, man, I'll never be a fan. He had a testimony like none of the other he did. I'll never be a fan of you. In fact, if they take you, they got to take me first. What a day. Now, as he was leading Jesus away, he got to looking around. He had at least 12 days. He got to looking around. And the Bible says they all turned down and around. That's all he was. You know what he could have done? He could have said, that's it. That you remember, you remember way back when he was feeding the multitudes. Amen. After he fed thousands, he began to preach the word of the Lord unto him. And the Bible says the multitude began to leave him. And finally he looked around and didn't have nobody but the twelve. You see, and he thought for sure, no doubt. Man, I can count on this twelve. I mean, this multitude, I knew they was here for the dinner. I knew they was here for the fish. They was here for the bread. They was hungry. But now these twelve, they're special. And he looked at them and said, Will you also go away? It was his old big mouth Peter. I did not ask. He, just, he had a testimony. He jumped up and said, Well, to whom shall we go? Seeing that thou hast the words of eternal life. And that was right. Amen. Jesus said, oh, well, then I've got me 12 right here. They will stick with me. Amen. And he took them with him all the way to the end. Until they turned to the end. He took them to Gethsemane. He said, fellows, pray with me. My hour is at hand. Death is just around the corner. Pray with me. If you don't want to pray, at least watch for me. Turn back to the sleep. <laughs> and the Bible, and the Bible says, Amen. 
You know the rest of the story. They led him on to power. And there they misentreated Jesus. And they beat him. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. And they whipped him on the back. And they smote him with a ring. And they beat him unmerciful. And they led him away to crucify him. But you know what he did for Peter? You know what he could have done? He could have, when he turned around and the twelve had fled, he could have said, that's it. I'm not taking another step. I'm not going to appear before Pilate. And I'm certainly not going to go up Calvary. If this is what they think of me, after seeing the miracle working power of God, amen, I'm just going back to hell. But that would have happened. Where would we be today? Where would we be today if there was no second chance? <laughs> Peter, and not only Peter, but the other disciples too, the other ten Jews have betrayed him, of course. Amen. They let him down. Where would we be? Where would we be if he would have said no? And he would have just vanished into the air because he could do that. In fact, he would just vanish out of the way sometimes. Amen. And they wouldn't know where he was at. Amen. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. You know why? He knew that you, amen, 2,000 years later, would be sitting here on an old apostolic tree. Amen. You wanted to make your peace and election sure with God and that you would need a Savior. Now, if he knew that you weren't going to do it on the first chance, maybe not the second chance, or maybe not the third chance, but he knew Somewhere, somewhere you really was going to get your heart right with God. Amen. And you're going to go out and be like Peter, and you're going to weep bitterly. Amen. And that's what he wanted to see out of Peter. He wasn't so much upset. Amen. That Peter cursed and swore. Amen. That he didn't know Jesus. He wasn't so much upset about that. But I'll tell you what would have upset Jesus. Amen. And Simon Peter had realized. Amen. What he'd done in the sins. Amen. That he committed. And but he know Simon Peter realized that the crowing of the cock, he went out in a Bible study. Amen. He wept bitterly, meaning he repented. And I believe he cried out to God, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. I guarantee you. Give me another chance of tears streaming down his eyes. And you know what Jesus did? He gave him another chance. That same Peter that lied three times. That curse and swore time and time and time again, Jesus gave him another chance to redeem himself. And that's why you're in the house of the Lord today. It's God's giving you another chance, amen, to redeem yourself, amen, for the foolishness that you have committed while you've been out on God. Will you take the chance? Or perhaps, will it be your last chance? I promise you, as he is a God of changes, second, third, fourth, ten, and twenty, he's also a God of the last chance. One day man will have received his last chance, and there will be no that same Peter, when he realized, found him an order. Oh, God, I'm sorry. If you'll just give me one more chance, it'll be different. And you know what Jesus did? He gave to that person, swearing, lying Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The keys to the kingdom. He didn't give them to Matthew. He didn't give them to Bartholomew, Nathaniel, amen, and none of the rest, he gave them to Peter. I, I think a lot of times when the Bible says the rest of them fled, Peter did fall on far off. You don't read that about John, the revelator. Huh? You don't read that about James, that he followed afar, but you read about old Peter did go farther with him than anybody else. 
I don't know, and I'm not saying that's why Jesus gave him the keys of the kingdom. Probably, most likely not. He got the keys because he got the revelation. Now, my point is, he gave Peter a second chance. And when Peter took it, that Acts 2.38, apostolic Pentecostal preacher that we have been preaching about and quoting for 2,000 years. Amen. He got it because he had to have a second chance. So if the devil hops on your shoulder, bugging you about your past, reminding you of what you've done in your past, remind him that you serve a God of second chances. Amen. Remind him how the Peter fell and God gave him another chance. How the Moses fell and God gave him another. Did you know that Moses was a killer? Yes, he was. Moses was a stone, cold killer that literally beat a man to death with his fist or some object in his hand. The Bible says he was raised, he was a Jew, but he was raised as an Egyptian. And he came out after being in Egypt for 40 years, and he saw, he saw an Egyptian mistreating a Jew. And the Bible says that Moses got so angry that he killed the Egyptian and he buried him in the sand. Right? Killed him. Him was a cold-blooded murder, I think. Buried him in the sand, went on about his business. Day two, he come back out. He saw two Jews striving one with another. And the Bible says he went out to break up the fight. But the one has saw what he done. They said, what are you going to do? You want to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? And then when Moses knew that it was known, he fled Egypt, went to who would become his father-in-law, Jethro, the Midianite, spent another 40 years there. But somewhere in that second 40-year period, God gave him a second chance. Let me glad for second chances. Peter, a liar, a person, a false oath swearer, Moses, a killer. But at the conclusion of the second 40 years, he sees a light, a bush burning that was not consumed. And the Bible says that he made his way to Sinai and he approached the bush to see why it wasn't consumed. And the Bible says that the voice spoke out to Moses, Moses. I'm going to give you another chance. Ain't God wonderful. Now, where will we all be with that second chance? I guarantee you that when I was in the house of the Lord today, if any, it'd be very few, maybe two or three. But I'm telling you, hey, Moses, he could have said, I saw when you killed the Egyptian way back there almost 40 years ago. I seen where you buried him. So I'm going to give you a second chance, Moses. Moses said, all right, sounds good to me. And you know the rest of that story. How that he became the leader and patriarch of the nation of Israel. And never was there a man, the Bible says, that spoke with God any closer than Moses, and he was a killer who needed a second chance. Peter, the man with the keys, had to have a second chance. So don't feel bad when the devil tells you you want a third, fourth, fifth chance. It's just showing the mercy. Just look at the devil's man. He must really love me. All of these chances he's given me, man, he must think I'm something special. And you are special to him. Always look at yourself and be like, you're special to him. We all have been forgiven of things. Amen. We're like Peter, like Moses. We cross the line. But God is long suffering to us. He 
not willing that any should perish. Amen. And in closing, for a written paper, you know the story of Jonah. As good as I do. And how that, that God called Jonah in Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. Amen. And send him on a journey to go to Nineveh to preach against and cry against it because the wickedness had come up before him. What did Jonah do? Jonah decides, no. You're talking about a prophet. Now, he was a prophet of God. I mean, this man had been used by God before. I mean, his Nineveh preaching wasn't the first time that God, God had called it. Jonah was used during the era of King Jeroboam of Israel. That's where you first read of Jonah the prophet. Don't tell exactly all that he did, but Jonah knew God. He knew the voice of God. He heard God. He had received instruction from God before. And the second time around that we read about, God said, Jonah wants to go to Nineveh. He just thought, well, Lord, that's 550 miles north. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to hop in a Cadillac and go 550 miles. Man, just set that baby on cruise control and turn the air on and pitch in the summer and the heat on in the wind. That ain't no hard trip. Oh, you have to ride those on that camel, not be able to lift. I can imagine on riding those on. I don't know if I could even hang on to a on that camel. I'd have to get me one of them double hump camels. You ever seen them with the two humps? They have that place be right in the middle and put a seatbelt on. <laughs> then I don't know if I want to go on that. Hey, Amen. But can you imagine? 550 miles from Joppa to Nineveh. Was that the reason he didn't want to go? Absolutely not. But he refused to go. And the Bible says he went to Joppa, which I think is around Tel Aviv today, and bought him a ticket to Tarsus. Tarsus is a city in Spain, 2,500 miles south. I heard a preacher say it's true. Any time south is generally downward, north is upward. And any time you find yourself going downward, you're going in the wrong direction. He purchased him a ticket going to Tarsus 2,500 miles. So it wasn't the trip that he was worried about. Now, it was probably a better riding trip because this is going to be all by boat. I would not do it. And of course, you know the story. He pays the fire, hops on board, goes down the bottom, goes to sleep. And the Lord said, Lord's going to get you one way or another. I mean, you can pray today, or you can pray after you die. Somebody said, You don't believe in the best bread of your peace. No, I don't. Because you pray after you die, I don't mean God's going to hear you. Because He certainly won't. You got to pray now. Mom said, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. you to pray right now. But you're going to pray one of these days because the Bible says every knee shall bow to him on a judgment day, but it'll be too late. And the Bible said, oh, John, with us, that God sent a great wind out upon the sea. You know the story. The boat was tossed to and fro. They thought it was sinking. They tried to lock the load. They tried to bring it under control. And they could not because God was going after Jonah. I'm glad he came after me one day, too. I'm glad he came after me. And on the second, third, fourth, fifth chase, I surrendered and said, Yes, Lord, what will you have me to do? And God said, He ran down. The skipper did and said, Rise, O sleeper, call upon your God. And he come up on top, they figured out. Jonah was a prophet. He confessed, yeah. Now I don't want to tell you what the trouble is. The Lord sent me on a journey. And I decided I knew more about it than he did. I really didn't want to go anywhere. I wanted to go on a cruise. Maybe that was, I want to go on a cruise. Instead of riding the humpback camel. 
back. And anyway, he said, I'm the problem. You want to control these ships, save these ships, throw me overboard. Okay. Man, they just pissed him up, threw him overboard. You know what God could have done? God could have let him hit the water. He probably would have lasted about five to ten minutes, depending upon how good of a swimmer that he was, how long that he would have survived out there in that ocean. See, God could have just let let them and drowned in him, spoke to somebody else in Israel, and said, now I want you to go to Nineveh. But he didn't do it. You know why? Because he's the God of self Jesus. Now, Jonah flagrantly violated, refused, and rebuked the commandment written from God. And it wasn't like that Jonah started on a journey and it just so happened, accidentally took a wrong turn and ended up toward Tarsus. No. He knew well what he was doing. He knew the voice of God. God had spoken to him before. He was called a prophet of God. The Bible says, Amen. God gave him a second chance. And he prepared a great fear. The New Testament called the whale. And that whale, as the singers would come, swallowed old Jonah. And there was old Jonah in the belly of the whale. Got him. Yeah. I mean, that was bad, but it could be worse. How I many knows what I'm telling you is the truth? I mean, I can imagine being in the stomach or in the digestive system of a whale, and what that must have been like. But I'll tell you this, he could be on the outside of the whale, a man struggling to swim in a race that he could not win, but God decided to give him a second chance. Three days and three nights he was there, wrestling around in that slime seaweed, wrapping around his head. The whale trying to digest him. He could have come out the opposite end. Is that true? I mean, he's going to come out of one end or the other. But because he got a second change, God spoke to the fish, and the fish bombed him up on the dry land. What if he went out the other end? He would have been fish food for the ocean people. You see what God does. You see how powerful God is. You see what kind of God that is. He gave him a second chance. And what in that belly the Bible says, Jonah prayed. See, that's what God wanted. God wanted the same thing from Jonah that he got from Peter. He wanted the same thing from Jonah that he got from Moses when he stood before the bush. And God wants the same thing from you. If you're here today lost and backslidden or undone without God, what God wants from you is for you to surrender to Him. Surrender to His Word and surrender to His will. That's what God wants. I don't know how many chances you've had. You've had so many, I've lost count. But I know this, you have one more chance today to pile up on top of those innumerable chances you've already had. And all that God is looking for is what He looked for for Peter and Moses and Jonah. And the Bible says, when Jonah prayed, he said, out of the belly of hell, cried out. And his prayer went right into the throne room of heaven. And God heard his prayer. Bumping that on dry land. And in closing, this is this Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Give him a hand clap for a second chance. He's a wonderful God. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, 
that great city and preaching to it the preaching that I did there. And the Bible says, so Jonah arose because that's what he needed to do to take advantage of the second chance that God had given him. And went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city for three days. And you know what happened? Two things happened. Jonah was saved that day because God gave him a second chance. And the whole city of Nineveh that was wicked, barbaric people, heathen people, that could not be saved from the right of the left, repented. Second chances. Second chances. You're lost here today. You don't have to be lost. God, even as I said, what a hidden message for today, has given you another chance. A second chance is simply an opportunity. As Peter did to change the direction in his life. As Moses did to change the direction in his life. And as did John change the direction in his life. And you have opportunity today to change the direction in your life. So if you lost one of your invitations for you, you're seeking for the Holy Ghost tonight. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. So she begins to sing, Amen. Let us all stand and get around the front and let us worship God. Lord, it's saying, therefore, desire, for the Lord, it's worth the fire.